Hey everyone, it's Ben Capozzi in uh, Sutherland, Virginia, Zone 7A at uh, Broad Shoulders Farm. And I uh, wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about persimmons. Um, I am planting a lot of persimmons here in the orchard and around the farm. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Geese. Um, let me uh, flip the camera around and um, I'm actually going to share some uh, persimmons that I harvested from the roadside with um, <clears throat> my main flock of layers here. And um, we're also going to hang out near a, uh, a wild persimmon that um, I found. And I guess in a way we could say kind of uh, kind of got me going with this. All right, let me flip this around. All right, so here is a, uh, a native persimmon tree. Right next to that wine dot. Hey, Winnie. And um, the first time that uh, I cleared out this area, you can see this is where there's a fallen over apple tree here in the orchard. It's got all these uh, water sprouts and all that. I'm actually going to come in this year and hopefully thin this out. And I might even kind of weave them like a Belgian fence or something. It's pretty cool. But uh, the apple tree is very much alive. Produced some fruit this year. But anyhow, the first time I came through here and mowed this with all the uh, bramble that we're in here and uh, super tall grass and all that, I know enough about fruit trees to know that this was something. And so I'm glad that I didn't cut it. I posted pictures of it on uh, Facebook to friends in different um, fruit groups and folks said persimmon, American persimmon. So American persimmon is a uh, genus and species is a uh, Diospiros virginiana. And I think that uh, Diospiros is a uh, mix up between um, Greek and Latin. But it literally, literally means uh, food of the gods. And then the, uh, the species, Virginiana, lets you know that um, it's native to North America. Um, it's a fantastic fruit tree. Um, I had never had American persimmons until uh, this year, until like last month or the end of August, whatever, when I started uh, looking for the trees and I found a bunch on the roadside. And now on my different routes as I travel through, um, back countries here i know where to stop and find some so these are american persimmon fruits they look like beautiful little orange globes hanging up in the tree um these look pretty ugly and i'll talk about that in a minute when i share them with the birds but um yeah it's a, a north a native north american tree um it produces its fruit crop in the fall um, but uh, unlike apples and such um, it's obviously a much smaller fruit um, the american varieties can be very seedy um, but it can produce late, late, late into the season or hold the fruit on, let's say, uh, hold on to its fruit very late into um, winter and some varieties even um, over winter and into early spring. Um, there's also a, uh, an Asian variety um, that was uh, pretty much, uh, I think, cultivated and developed in Japan. Um, and that is the Diospiros khaki. K, uh, a-K-I, K-H-A-K-I. I'm not sure if it's spelled like the <coughs> tan-colored British pants or not. But anyhow. Um, and uh, persimmons, the Asian persimmons tend to be uh, much larger fruit on much smaller trees. Um, American persimmons, uh, from what I know, can get up to 20, 25 feet tall. I've definitely seen some that are much smaller than fruit. Um, but they can go... 30, 60, um, my buddy Clint uh, had one, unfortunately it came down, but it was 80 feet tall. Um, it was beautiful, um, it was massive. I mean, the diameter at breast height was, I mean, I, I don't know, 30 some inches. I mean, it was, it was enormous, maybe 28. Um, but, uh, so they get to be quite large and they produce a ton of fruit that uh, holds late into the season. And, you know, Broad Shoulders Farm is, uh, the name of my farm, uh, is not a comment uh, on uh, my physical stature or prowess. Um, it's about, I wanted to have a farm that grew things uh, pretty much year round, including across the broad shoulders of the season. Um, one of the things I learned from managing uh, farmers markets in the area and then selling baked goods at farmers markets in the area is that most of the folks around here uh, grow just a, a typical uh, southern family uh, backyard garden, tons of squash, tons of peas, tons of uh, collards and uh, corn and things like that. But nobody really grows anything uh, early in the season and nobody grows anything really late into the season. And that, that's starting to change, but I really want it to be 
uh, someone who helped kind of drive that change. And that's Fletcher back there. He's our La Fleche rooster. It's a great old French breed. Um, but uh, I kind of got waylaid here getting involved with the chickens and poultry and all that livestock. And that has kind of delayed my, um, my gardening business quite a bit. But, uh, but that's okay. But um, a neat thing about uh, persimmon trees uh, is that they are sexed. They are um, uh, dioecious. So you have male and female trees. And the male trees produce the pollen and the female trees produce the fruit. You typically don't know the sex of the tree uh, for about seven years when you can start to see uh, either the flowers or the fruit um, forming. So uh, I have no idea what uh, gender this one right here is. Um, I also have another persimmon um, seedling that I found um, back there and um, I've gotten to the point now where I can recognize it. First I always think they're pears um, but uh, but I know enough about pears to know that it's not quite pear-like. What is it? And like I said, now I've started to figure out that, oh, it's persimmon. Um, I hope that this one will be a, uh, a female variety and produce fruit, because I think that would be cool as hell. Um, but uh, if it's not, I can always overgraft it. And most of the persimmon trees that you're going to find are uh, for sale commercially are going to be grafted. Um, and that's where you take, a, just like an apple tree, you take a known cultivar and you graft it onto uh, a seedling rootstock. And that way you know what you're getting and you get a tree that will definitely produce fruit. Um, let me walk over towards the uh, other one here that I found. Hello ladies, hello ladies and gentlemen. Just gave them their uh, before bedtime snacks so everybody is chowing down. They look a little shaggy because it's uh, molting season. <laughs> hey Robert. Um, but uh, again, I was mowing. Hi, Pearl. Hello. But uh, another situation again, I was out here mowing and uh, and I was going to mow over this one, but instead I mowed past it because I said, I know that is um, something. And uh, I shared the pictures online and um, friends online and the fruit groups were like, oh yeah, that's a persimmon. So here's another persimmon. Um, I think these are the only two that I found um, that I didn't accidentally mow over. Um, there may be more. I have yet to find the mother tree where these are coming from, whether they're being carried in from uh, birds and uh, the seeds are then uh, crapped out over here or um, uh, animals are eating them. Apparently raccoons and squirrels and other uh, four-legged critters uh, absolutely love them. Deer love them. You may see a lot of uh, certainly American persimmons in deer plots. Um, hunters. Uh, have known about this tree for a while. Um, it grows all the way from Florida down to, I think, up to maybe zone four uh, in the USDA hardiness zones. Um, over here are two uh, American cultivars. Uh, so they're American varieties I have that, uh, that are not wild, um, but uh, they are cultivated uh, American varieties. These are both PROC, P-R-O-K, um, which produces a pretty darn good size persimmon, much larger than uh, the little ones that I've got over there that I'm going to share with the birds um, that uh, have uh, relatively few seeds and um, they produce fairly early. If uh, you've paid attention or you remember any of my other videos on designing the, the food orchard for the poultry food forest, um, this is the September and May paddock. So these are the earliest ripening persimmons I have. They are September varieties. Okay, so... Uh, persimmons you know so I've got apples the birds actually hung out in this paddock over here with these apple trees for this is they're more than two months in here now the apple trees are bare they've dropped all their apples the birds have been off of apples for I guess about a week or two but they were on apples for about six to seven weeks they still got their daily ration of uh, feed and uh, mixed grains but they had all the apples they could stand um, and they ate the heck out of them and then the apples that had uh, hit the ground and were no longer necessarily palatable, though for chicken, most everything's palatable, but even those had attracted worms and beetles and then the chickens loaded up on the protein that was brought in by those apples. But apples really start to give up the ghost in terms of getting a crop, even with a, a really late variety like Arkansas Black or something, by, uh, you know, November, maybe December, you've, uh, you've still got some fruit that's available for your animals. But that's when persimmons come in. And so I got kind of started on my persimmon journey by 
Uh, I contacted the folks at Edible Landscaping uh, in Afton, Virginia, which is about two hours north of us. It's a pretty famous um, uh, nursery. Their website is actually ediblelandscaping.com. And um, they've been up there for decades. But um, I just sent Michael, the owner, a note. And I said, what are your latest, most prolific varieties of persimmon? And, uh, and then the conversation went from there. So uh, I got a, a Korean variety, a, a new Nai, N-I-U, N-A-I. Um, I got a American and uh, Asian persimmon hybrid called a Rosayanka, flower of Russia. Um, and, uh, I got, uh, one called, <coughs> hey, Boudreaux, the black copper Moran's rue. Um, I got one called Tecumseh, which, uh, will hold the fruit, uh, reportedly, uh, even into February or even March. Um, so I got to, I got all of those, uh, and more, and I've kind of been on a kick now. I mean, I've added earlier ripening, uh, hard varieties like, uh, Gilya, and um, Fuyu, I've got two kinds of Fuyu, a Waze uh, Fuyu, and um, a different one. I've got a couple Saijo, which is considered a really gourmet um, and choice variety. Um, an interesting thing about persimmons is you have astringent varieties and non-astringent varieties. And astringent varieties uh, are going to give you cotton mouth if you eat them when they're not ripe. So if you see these gorgeous little orange orbs hanging up in the tree and you want some, uh, don't bite because they will completely dry out your mouth and you have a very unpleasant experience. But if you wait for them to drop, which is why the ones that I had over there that I showed you look so terrible because I pulled them up off the ground and who knows how long they've been there because I found them, you know, along roadsides. Um, or you wait for first frost that triggers um, the sugaring process where the, um, the tree starts to produce, um, the fruit starts to produce sugars as a form of antifreeze for the frost and then they sweeten up, 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 and that's where you get their name. Diospiros literally means uh, food of the gods. Um, and persimmons, ripe persimmons, taste like a cross between uh, caramel and toasted marshmallows and honey. Um, they are incredibly, it's, it's literally like a candy bar off of a tree. Um, they're loaded up with lots of uh, vitamins and nutrients as well, um, fiber. Um, they're really, really amazing. And uh, let me feed some of them to the birds here. But um, it's a really amazing uh, and kind of neglected American fruit. Um, the varieties tend to have a lot of seeds. Uh, most of the Asian varieties tend not to have seeds. <sighs> um, there's also uh, hard when ripe varieties. These are ripe when they are soft and mushy and almost like pudding. Um, you know, like that is goopy. You would just like goop that out onto a piece of toast and it would be incredible. Um, but some of the Asian varieties are ripe and sweet even when they're hard, uh, like an apple. Chick, chick, chick. Hey guys, I don't know if this group has had persimmons yet. Check them out, Blue Girl. See what you think. <laughs> uh, they will love them, but uh, so I am adding loads and loads of persimmons um some especially the asian varieties are quite large uh, i've got uh, hachia which is like uh, the size of a softball but shaped like an acorn um i've got the fuyu ones that are more kind of flat like um like a donut peach or a saturn peach um and uh just lots and lots of different varieties they get sweeter when it frosts um and they fill a real niche here for winter fresh fruit for my birds and of course, I'm planting them all now, and they're going to take uh, anywhere from two, three, maybe even five or six years for some of them to fruit, though the Asian varieties tend to be quite precocious, especially something like Fuyu. Um, but, uh, I hate Dorcas. I got to give Dorcas some. She'll be upset. But um, I, I just really, really recommend them. And then um, what I'm moving to after persimmons is going to be um, kiwi, um, fuzzy kiwi. Fuzzy kiwis actually start to ripen in, um, you can get early ones like September, but some of them go into November and December is when they ripen. And yeah, I'm talking about like the fuzzy kiwis that you get at the grocery store. Those are actually an awesome winter fruit that you can harvest if you have a nice trellis and everything set up uh, from November, you know, into uh, January, February, and March. So that is another fresh fruit, fresh source of vitamin C. Uh, vitamins and minerals that I'm uh, looking to add here to the orchard in some quantity uh, to feed the birds. Because, you know, I mean, 
summer and fall stuff is pretty easy in terms of fresh fruit you know from uh, berries to apples and pears and uh, different nut trees and such as well but when it gets cold um, persimmons and hopefully soon kiwi are what I am uh, designing to fit the bill and I'm planting more than the birds will eat so that of course I have a um, surplus that I can bring to the market. Hey Chow, are you undergoing your molt guy? You look a little shaggy. Um, but uh, so I really encourage you to check out persimmons. Um, they're not that expensive. Um, if you're into uh, hunting or deer plots, you can find lots of them, American varieties that, um, that may work for you. Um, I encourage you to do a mix of the American and Asian um, because the Asian varieties really take out a lot of the seeds so you don't have to worry about the processing. Um, there's hard wind ripe varieties and soft wind ripe varieties. There's Asian, sorry, there's uh, astringent varieties and non-astringent varieties, but they all taste, uh, when they're ripe, they all taste incredible. Um, so, and people make persimmon pies and persimmon bread and persimmon jam and persimmon beer. Um, and, uh, and you should too. So yeah, I hope maybe this turns you on to persimmons and, um, and you check them out and see if they'll work in your climate. Um, and, uh, I'll hope to graft some here, uh, next year. So if I do that, um, I'll of course do a video about it. Um, you collect the scion wood, uh, when the tree is dormant in the, uh, late winter. Um, same as like with apples or late fall or uh, early winter, same as with apples and pears and such. But you do the grafting when the tree is actively growing. So you don't graft before the rootstock wakes up. You actually graft onto the growing tree like in early summer, which is kind of crazy. Um, so anyhow, it's a little different, but um, what's not different is that like apples and pears, it's amazing and nutritious and you should grow more of them. So I uh, hope you found this interesting. Um, questions, comments, concerns, helpful critique, always welcome. Uh, and you can follow uh, me and my farm adventures and the Chickarooties here uh, at Broad Shoulders Farm on Instagram and Facebook. Hi, Dorcas. You want another one? And um, wherever you are, I hope that you are healthy and happy. And um, please stay that way. And uh, Dorcas and I will talk to you all later. Take care. Chestnut, you want one?